Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. Essentially, now, when you look throughout the history of medicine, mm -hmm. there, there are things that have been done to people of color, to black people, that is inexcusable. Yes. And the one that comes to mind is the Tuskegee, 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 Tuskegee. syphilis um, experiment. Many people know about this. If you mm. ask most people in the African-American community, most people in the black community, and a lot of the, what, what, I, what I really appreciate about working in a, because I work in a predominantly, um, in a community that's predominantly black people, that's who I predominantly treat. Mm. I like talking to the elders in the community. Mm. And after I've, you know, gotten their medical history or whatever, I asked them, how was it growing up? And what the stories they tell you is mm. mind blowing. Mm. One told me once that he was young, he came to the hospital and because we found it strange, we did a CAT scan for him, he has one kidney. We're like, bro, how do you have one kidney? Mm. When, when I was young, they took it out. Why? What? I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> he says, I don't know. What? They just- says, I don't know. Now, people- They just stole his go, kidney? People would hear that and go, that's ridiculous. That wow. can't happen. Now, that could be said if, when you look at the Tuskegee syphilis experiment, mm. in 1932, a paper came out of Oslo, Norway, and it said that, you know, um, Caucasians or whites, when they get syphilis, they have a lot of neurologic involvement. Mm. And so this is, the, this, is the, this is the government, this is the public health service, mm. now, funded a study saying, hmm, what if black people have more heart issues with their syphilis? This is just a theory. They have no facts behind it. This is just their theory. Mm -hmm. What did they do? They went about, they went, they, they thought to themselves, where would we find a high concentration of black people? So they went to Macon. Yeah. And it, at that time at a high level of, you know, blacks that had syphilis. They incorporated them in this study. The study was supposed to be six months. Mm -hmm. They told them, you're going to get food. You're going to mm -hmm. get good care. We're going to be treating you. They were giving them zero treatment. Mm -hmm. They watched these men deteriorate in front of their eyes. Mm -hmm. They watched them transfer syphilis to their wives. Yeah. They watched children being born with congenital syphilis. Mm -hmm. And what makes it even worse, the study was supposed to be six months you know how long the study ended up going for? How long? Take a guess. Okay. Five years? Nope. Five Ten years? years? <laughs> nope. Oh, 20 wow. years? Nope. 40 years, bro. Woo. 1932 to 1972. It took someone mm -hmm. to, they did some research and go, wait, wait a minute, what's going on here? And they, a whistleblower is what caused that, that study to be stopped. Here's what's crazy. In 1945, mm -hmm. the medical fraternity found out that penicillin could treat syphilis and it became the standard of care. So, so even though like penicillin has been out, run around forever, right? And it's such a cheap. So they knew at that time, they knew it's available. Mm -hmm. It's been used. Mm -hmm. It's curing syphilis. They went about ensuring that these men did they not get, get the treatment. Didn't get it, yeah. Didn't get treated. And then they would go to the doctors, black doctors, and say mm -hmm. to them, if they come to you for treatment, they're a part of our study. Don't treat them. <laughs> and so this act of just blatant, blatant, you know, experimentation and exploitation of people just by the, based on the, 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 the social construct of how they look, mm. became such a widespread understanding amongst the, amongst, you know, African-Americans and blacks in, in this country that they said, well, wait, you people use us as guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. You don't have our best interest at heart. You have to use mm -hmm. us as guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. So when there is a distrust of the medical system, I can't look at that person and say, you, you know, use your, use your intellect. Yeah, yeah, you got a point. They got set up. So if I get set up, why am I going to go again and, and believe in it? 
So mm-hmm. I want I wanted to be framed in that manner because it's important, you know, as as a, as a physician, what, what I look at is I look at being in the other person's shoe. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to speak from a point of I'm looking down at them, mm-hmm. but I want to. This is my brother. This yeah. is my sister. This mm-hmm. is my father. This mm-hmm. is my uncle. This mm-hmm. is my aunt. Okay, that's right. So essentially, this is this is my aunt. This is my uncle. You know. So and I, I'm not I'm not talking about this in the in the construct of how somebody looks based on your race color or whatever. Um, but I mean in the general sense. Mm-hmm. And then it becomes even more so when the person is black. That's just the reality, mm-hmm. right? So I have to understand where they're coming from. I have to have empathy. I have to have that understanding. And this, this isn't a one-off situation. You know, there is a, there's a cell line, and it's called the Henrietta Lake cell line. I don't know if you've ever heard about it, but essentially it's a cell line that they found that they've been able to do multiple treatment and studies and so on from, and it was taken from a black female, Henrietta, without her knowing, without her approval, the family didn't know, the family, you know, so we've had multiple things happen to um, people of African descent in mm-hmm. the Americas that on the medical side, that makes them very, um, that do not make them trust, make them, have, you know, they, they have a huge level of distrust. Mm-hmm. So what that has led to is it has led to healthcare disparity, mm-hmm. meaning that some people will have things happen to them at a higher rate Great. than others. Yes. And healthcare disparity has two factors. It has internal factor and external factors. Mm-hmm. One of the internal factors is trust. If I don't trust that this doctor is giving me the right medication, I'm not going to him. I'm mm-hmm. not going to her. I'm not going for that surgery. Mm-hmm. But the external factors are what we just explained a while ago. The fact that the medical system also played significant parts in creating an unfair and an unjust system. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if we look at in the 80s and 90s, when the opioid epidemic is hitting um, black people, Mm. how was it treated at that time? By criminalization? the, the The crack epidemic, right? Yeah. How was it treated? Yeah, just say no. <laughs> just say you are no. What? <laughs> but you are what? What were you? Three you strikes. Criminal. Three strikes. You're going to jail for the rest of your life. <laughs> you know. And you were a criminal. Yeah. <laughs> the black people and were so, And so you was criminalized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, when it has affected another population. Yeah. Now it's the opioids. Because back then now it was crack. Not, it was crack. A, it was cocaine. Opioid Nobody epidemic. cared. Nobody cared about the, the Surgeon General, mm-hmm. right? The Surgeon General, brilliant guy, you know, mm-hmm. he's an African American, brilliant guy, said, because his brother was also affected by this opioid epidemic. Mm-hmm. Now, what we're saying in medicine is that, listen, addiction is a what? It's a chronic disease. It's, yeah, it's a sickness. You see now. that shift? All of a sudden, it's a sickness. <laughs> and we treat it now as a sickness. Yeah. To the point where back then, the medication that could reverse it in case you're about to die, called mm-hmm. naloxone, mm-hmm. The me- that medication, you could get it at the hospital. Mm-hmm. Now, police have it, wow. EMT have it. Bro, even family members have it. Wow. So when your son or your daughter, when you go into the room and they are strung out, mm-hmm. just hit them with the naloxone. Why? Because we want them to be alive because mm-hmm. we want to treat them as what? as yes. someone who's dealing with a disease condition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't the case before. Nope. <laughs> that's the reality. Mm-hmm. Another thing we look at is, you look at what happened after, you know, the, you know, you've, you've, you've removed, you know, um, the, the legislations that would have allowed persons to just walk up to a black person mm-hmm. and just say, hey, you must be owned by somebody. Click, kick him, you know, hit him in the head, kill him. Mm. All of those is removed, right? Mm -hmm. But now persons are concentrated in where? In the ghettos. Mm. What happens in the ghetto is what? You have poor nutritional opportunities. You have high fructose corn syrup. You have shops that have technically nutritionally deficient food. Eventually eventually these ghettos and these these projects essentially are, are food deserts. 
They're food deserts. They don't actually give you food. What they give you is a whole bunch of processed stuff to keep you, uh, you know, basically docile. High, cor high fructose corn syrup, MSG, all these type of chemical foods. So right? do we think the people don't know this? The people mm -hmm. know this, man. Mm -hmm. People know this. So it's like a setup. So now I have my high blood pressure. I got my diabetes. But you don't want to deal with the issues that led to it? Mm. Of course, we got to deal with those issues. And that's the reality. Mm -hmm. Now, because we understand those, those are external factors. So what I want persons to understand, especially in our community, mm -hmm. what they need to understand is while you are struggling to fix the external factors, you have to be accountable for your internal factors. Mm. You have to seek the knowledge. Yes. You have to be empowered with understanding what's going in your body and how it's affecting you. Mm -hmm. You have to understand what the distrust of the medical system, what it will lead to if you don't seek care at the right time. Mm -hmm. And so the two have to come hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And so now when we look at the situation of the coronavirus, right across the US, almost mm -hmm. every single state, who was most affected? Black people. Black people. And the funny thing is, uh, Dr. Tijani, uh, when the coronavirus first popped off, and you can see it on my mm -hmm. channel too, right? Um, there were white supremacists openly saying that we should spread this virus in the black community. Wow, and I didn't surprise, know surprise, I the didn't know most that effective people from the coronavirus just happen to be blacks i didn't i didn't know that i didn't know yes that. And, I and i put the video on my on my what i can say is you know the the, the black and hispanic community mm -hmm. has been hit tremendously hard in new york this mm -hmm. is this is i mean so so for persons to now spread videos and spread whatever they want to spread Mm. without actually looking at the numbers mm. is grossly, grossly incompetent and is doing your own people a disservice. Your people one, are one, of dying. The, one of these doctors that are being spread like wildfire, his name is Dr. Roshad Buttar, right? Okay. And and like like I like I said, I'm just a simple guy, right? So so one of the things that he's saying is that the coronavirus is uh, it's Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes, I love you. Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes. Inami? Yes, only you.